the Holy Ghost whispered to me I was praying I had trouble all week just settling on something to preach and generally when that happens I know somewhere somewhere we're gonna the river's gonna move us I can just sense that I could discern that but yesterday the Holy Ghost whispered to me and tell them don't go down without a fight don't go down without a fight now listen to me in Acts chapter 16 Paul and Silas have just cast a spirit of divination out of a young girl making the religious leaders who were making money off of her mad in verse 22 we find that the magistrates commanded that Paul and Silas be beaten and, and what the word they used was striped they put stripes on them so Paul and Silas have been beaten with rods many historians and scholars believe they received similar to a Roman whipping post to something uh, uh, something similar to what Jesus experienced being beaten and Paul and Silas are wounded Paul and Silas are bleeding Paul and Silas are feeling the effects of the moment they've just gone through and I've just since this whole day this choir has been up here breaking the atmosphere but I've just sensed the heaviness in the room and I believe it's because there is a many of you in this room have been under an Acts chapter 16 22 attack the beatings of life the wounds of life the bleeding of life weary the magistrates after they beat them said to them take Paul and Silas and throw them in prison and watch them and the Bible said that the jailer took them and put them in an inner prison in Roman times their prisons were not like our prisons nobody in the prison got an individual cell there were outer cells and there were inner cells in the inner prison it was dark it was dingy no light it was filthy and these men were often clothed and it wasn't just men but it was men and women were often clothed with very little chained to the wall and I sense that's where some of you are this morning beaten wounded discouraged in fear in trepidation doubt and worry are surrounding you not only that the devil isn't putting you in an outer court he's put you in an inner prison deep dark place and then the Bible there's a switch that happens because we've now heard of the toil and the terror that they've been through but then in Acts chapter 16 and 25 it starts like this and at midnight and at midnight which is not necessarily 12 a.m. but it is the the darkest part of the night in an inner cell in the darkest part of the night beaten wounded bloodied discouraged in fear Paul and Silas began to pray and sing hymns unto God now I gotta help you understand because the same the, the, the phrase in the Greek does not differentiate between praying and praising what the Greek says is they were intermittently they would pray and then they would sing they would pray and then they would sing they would sing their prayers and then they would pray their songs pray their songs and sing their prayers 
and 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 so now I always grew up with this picture in my mind of an American jail cell where Paul and Silas were by themselves in a cell and the prisoners just heard them through the walls but that's not at all what happened what was happening was Paul and Silas are chained to a wall and they're in a big room chained to a bunch of other prisoners nobody's alone there's no privacy and Paul and Silas decided I'm not I'm not going to let these people I'm not going to let these men I'm not going to let these misfits I'm going to let these chains stop me from doing what I know can deliver me from this prison so they sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them because they didn't have a choice The prisoners heard them. And then verse 26. And suddenly. That word suddenly means unexpectedly. Out of nowhere. You see, God has a way when you praise him of bringing an unexpected something into existence. He has a way of bringing an unexpectedly into the atmosphere of your life, even into dark and inner deep places. God has a way of suddenly coming in. To a situation, yeah, we're making a shift. I feel it in the atmosphere. And and so suddenly there was an earthquake, and the Bible said that the foundations of the prison were shaken. Not just the walls of the prison, but the foundations of the prison. The very thing that held that prison up, the very thing that gave that prison stability, God began to shake. And isn't it like God that when He shows up on the scene with a suddenly, He does He doesn't go after the symptoms of the problem. He doesn't go after the inner workings of the problem. He goes after the thing that no eye can see. He goes after the foundation of a thing. And he says, I'm going to shake this thing. And then when he shook the foundation, the Bible said that the doors of the jail, every cell, the inner cell and the outer cell were swung open and the chains fell off of every prisoner. And and then the jailer runs in and he says, I'm going to die. They're going to kill me. So he puts a sword to his neck and Paul says, don't kill yourself. We've got to get past the point where we believe just because the devil started it means it's the devil's plan all along. Because there comes a point in time that the devil may have started it. But God steps in and God says, I'm going to turn all things for the good of those who love me and are called according to my purpose. And what started as an attack of the enemy, God stepped in and said, not so. Because what did the devil intended for evil, I'm going to work out for good. And so Paul, Paul, listen. Paul witnesses to the jailer and Paul the jailer gets saved and the Bible said that the same jailer that whipped him and the same jailer that jailed him was now the jailer that was washing his wounds God has a way of taking the very thing that hurts you and turning it into healing God has a way of taking the very thing that harmed you and making a way for wholeness to come but this is where I want to get to this is where I want to get to Because now in the morning, somebody shout in the morning. In the morning. His favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy cometh in the morning. And and in the morning, the magistrates came and said, let them go. They didn't know they were already let go. And the jailer said, this is what I want to get to because I feel like some of y'all need this. The jailer said to Paul, they've let you go. Now go in peace. And, and, And Paul said, they've whipped us openly. They threw us in prison. And now you want me to keep my mouth shut? Now you want me to just leave 
and not say anything. No, 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 no. You tell them if they want us out, you tell them to come on down here and get us out themselves. And this is what I came to tell you. I came this morning to tell you if the devil was going to kill you, he should have killed you while he had you. If the devil was going to shut you up, he should have shut you up while he had you. But now you're standing on the outside of a prison wall. And now the devil wants you to be quiet. But I need somebody who will get on their feet and say, I'm not leaving here without a fight. I'm not leaving this battle. I'm not leaving this moment. I'm not leaving in peace. I'm not leaving with my mouth shut. I've got a weapon and my weapon is praise and I've made a decision. I'm not leaving here without a fight. Oh, see, some of y'all need to know it because if the devil was going to kill you, he should have done it already. His worst mistake was not taking you out when he could have. His worst mistake was not taking you out when he should have. But now here you stand in a new season in your right mind and you've got a reason to lift up your voice and praise the Lord even in the middle of the interstate, even in the middle of the doors being shut, even in the middle of the chains being rolled. There's a praise on the inside that shakes the gates of 